What's going on, Alex here. I hope you're keeping well. So, the iPhone 13 Pro. I've been using this for the past week or so, and I have to say, I'm very impressed with it. One thing I wasn't impressed with was the unboxing experience. All you get is the phone, the USB-C to lightning cable, some documentation, and an Apple sticker, and that's it. Now, the 13 Pro looks pretty much identical to the 12 Pro from last year, and to be honest, that's not a bad thing. It's got this really nice, flat, boxy design, stainless steel sides and a matte glass finish on the back to avoid fingerprints and stuff like that. The phone feels really premium in your hand and so it should. It costs over a thousand euro, you want to get a premium experience. As you can see I went for the graphite model but it does come in three other colours, silver, gold and sierra blue. I also went for the 128 gig of storage but it goes right the way up to a terabyte. One thing you'll notice straight away is the weight. It's quite a heavy device and if you're using it for long periods of time your arm or hand could get fatigued. Now this is a good thing, it's probably a sign to tell you to put the phone down and do something else. But yeah, something I noticed straight away was the weight. On the front you have a 6.1 inch display and on the 13 Pro Max you have a 6.7 inch display. I opted for the 13 Pro because previously I had an S20 Plus which was 6.7 inches and I just felt that the smaller screen would suit me a bit better. One of the cool things this year is there's no real difference between the Pro and the Pro Max. The only thing is screen size and battery. You don't lose out on any features by going for just the regular Pro like you did last year, so you're not forced to get the most expensive product to get the best experience. So the notch has been reduced in size by 20%, so it's slightly narrower. Now, this is only a visual improvement as you don't get any extra information like battery percentage or extra icons. It's simply just a smaller notch on the same size screen. On the back, you'll notice that the cameras are absolutely massive compared to previous years. And even if you put on Apple's silicone case, the phone won't lie flat on a table. That's how big they are. This year's iPhone still has MagSafe, which was introduced last year. And I'm excited to get all the different accessories that come with it for my car and for my desk and stuff like that. I have got one thing which was kindly sent out by Quintus. It's their version of Apple's MagSafe charging puck. And yeah, basically it's a wireless charger that magnetically clicks to the back of your phone. It's far cheaper than Apple's version. And it actually has this little kickstand bit so you can angle your phone up at your desk so you can see it at a glance. It's a pretty cool product. I'll leave it linked down below in case you want to check it out. So as I mentioned, the 13 Pro has a 6.1 inch display and it's a beautiful Super Retina XDR display with ProMotion. This is Apple's version of a high refresh rate screen and ProMotion enables the phone to adapt its refresh rate depending on what's happening on the screen. So if it's a still image, it'll be at 10 Hertz and then as soon as you start scrolling, it'll ramp up to 120 Hertz. This is something that iPhone users have been crying out for for years and it's been worth the wait. The screen is gorgeous. Colors are super accurate, videos look amazing and that 120 Hertz display just makes everything seem really smooth. So yeah, the screen on the 13 Pro is pretty good. Now let's talk about the cameras. Apple always deliver amazing cameras on their phones and they've done it again with the 13 Pro. So the front camera is probably the one that I use the least, but it has a 12 megapixel sensor and can record in 4K. I'm not too into selfies, but I think it does a good job of capturing images in case you need them. It also has Apple's new feature of cinematic mode. So this is cinematic mode on the selfie camera. As you can see, I'm nicely in focus. And then if I tap my computer screen, it jumps to there and tap back, it jumps really quickly. So it's quite a cool feature for the selfie camera. Then on the back, all the cameras have a 12 megapixel sensor, which is why they're so big. So the main wide angle camera has an aperture of f1.5 and is 26 mil. And as you'd expect, it captures really sharp, high quality images, and it's even got improvements in low light. Apple's website says it captures 2.2 times more light, so that's great for night photography. The ultra wide has probably got the biggest improvements this year. It now has an aperture of f1.8 and it still has the 13 mil, 120 degree field of view. But with that big sensor, it allows a lot more light in so you can get much better low light photography compared to previous ultra wides on the iPhone. The ultra wide camera also doubles up as a macro lens and this is pretty cool. You can get as close as two centimeters and still be in focus, which is great for things like plant photography. One of the annoying things is, is you can't flick this macro mode on and off. So if you're using the made wide angle lens and you get close to something, it will automatically flick to the ultra wide angle lens and get into macro mode. Apple has addressed this, that they'll send out a software update that you can toggle this on and off, but at the moment it's a little bit annoying that it automatically turns macro mode on. Then finally we have the telephoto lens. Now this has an aperture of f2.8 and is 77 mil. This year Apple has increased it to three times zoom compared to last year's models which had two and 2.5 times zoom. Again, this lens is great. It's really high quality images, not so strong in low light, but it's great at getting closer to subjects 
and even things like portrait photography, it's really strong. One of the biggest talking points when it came to the cameras this year was cinematic mode. And I touched on it a little bit with the selfie camera, but it's probably more relevant for the rear cameras. And basically this is portrait mode for video, where the subject is nicely in focus and the background it has a real shallow depth of field and is all blurred out. But the thing that Apple really pushed was this is for videographers to make shots more cinematic with rack focusing, where I could be in focus and then I turn my head and look at someone else and it pans to them and is, has them in focus, which is great for filmmaking. And you'll see it a lot in movies where they adjust focus really quickly. And it's pretty cool that you can do this in such a small device. Personally, I probably don't know when I'll use it that much, but it is a cool feature to have in your back pocket. Another cool feature Apple added to the camera is photographic styles. And this is basically where you pick a style of photo before you actually take it. To do this, you just swipe up in the camera and hit the layers panel, and then you can choose between rich contrast, vibrance, warm and cool depending on the kind of style of photo you want to take. One thing to note on photographic styles is that this, the style you choose will be bedded into the photo and you can't change it afterwards like you can a filter. Last thing I want to talk about is battery life and performance. And I have to say that this is probably the thing that has impressed me the most with the 13 Pro. So Apple have said that this year's Pro models give you 2.5 hours extra battery life. And I have to say after a week or so of heavy use every day, I think the lowest the battery has been when going to bed is around 20%, which is incredible. I'm scrolling through social media, watching YouTube videos, streaming Netflix, listening to music, taking calls, and the battery just doesn't seem to go down. It's incredible. So this is down to how efficient the 13 Pro is with Apple's new A15 Bionic chip. iPhones have always been efficient, but this new chip improves on that again. Everything on the phone just works instantly and it's an absolute pleasure to use. So just to wrap things up, if you couldn't tell already, I'm really happy with the 13 Pro. Making the switch from Android is always quite daunting, but I think the 13 Pro is a perfect iPhone to switch over to. I could recommend this phone to pretty much everyone except someone who has a 12 Pro. I don't think there's that much of an improvement to justify the upgrade, but to literally everyone else, I think you'll be getting a really good deal. Incredible cameras, amazing battery life, and that gorgeous screen. This iPhone just has it all. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.